Blessed be the name of the Lord who has brought us together. I really want to appreciate God for your life, my dear brother, for putting up this uh, summit. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Uh, this day, I'll be sharing on the teaching titled Church Problems Today church reality tomorrow church problems today church reality tomorrow let us pray our most high god we thank you we bless your name we glorify you O lord god almighty for gathering us together to come and learn at your feet lord jesus you are the best teacher we ask that you come and teach us by yourself and as you teach us by your spirit open our understanding in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, church problems today, church reality tomorrow. Uh, let me start by saying that problems are part and parcel of life. Problems are part and parcel of life. And so also, problems are part and parcel of ministry and the church. There is no church, there is no person who does not have a problem. Problems are part of parcel of life. There are various problems or challenges facing a lot of us today. Problems of group, problems from associates, problems from family, financial problem, problems from church members, and many, many others like that. But one thing is sure, every problem has an expiry date. And God will give us victory over whatever problems that is confronting us or confronting our churches and ministry in Jesus' name. Now, uh, I want to read uh, a Bible passage. And there are so many Bible passages in the material which will be of great help to us if we are able to get the material. Now, if you look at Acts of Apostles chapter 6, Acts of Apostles chapter 6, I'll read from verses 1 to 3. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is no reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, the disciples use wisdom to solve the problems that arose in the early church. So also today, we will need the wisdom of God in order to be able to solve whatever problems that is confronting us in the church today. If you look at Luke chapter 10, there is the story of the problem, little problem between Mary and Martha when Jesus visited their house. One began to complain about the other, but with wisdom, Jesus solved the problem. Then if you read Matthew 13, Jesus told a parable of why men slept, that the enemies came and sowed tears. Today, the devil has sowed tears into many churches, and there is no doubt about that. And many of these tears, we will have to allow them to continue to grow with us until the time of harvest so that the right people that we see as problem 
will not be uprooted even before uh, the actual time that God really wants to give us victory. Now, the church is not exempted from problems. Why? Because the church is comprised of people. And wherever you have people, there will always be a problem. People are problem. And people are the ones that gather in churches. So, problems, people, and the church, they are interwoven. Because people, as we know, church is the ecclesia, the called out. People that are called out from darkness, from serving Satan, from serving the world into the glorious light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And except the Lord intervenes, the problems that churches are going through will continue unabated. But I pray that the Lord will intervene in whatever problems that we are going through. But one thing is important. We have to go back even to the founder and the foundation of the church. Until the church, with all our components, the leaders, the workers, the ministers, the members, and whatever, until the church returns to the cross, where the Savior died and concluded our deliverance, the church might be overwhelmed with our problems. Now let me give us some facts about problems. Number one, there is no problem-free life. Somebody says that a problem-free life could only be found in the grave or in the cemetery. Now, that problem-free life that can be found in the grave or in the cemetery, it is even if that person in the grave has given his or her life to Christ, that's when the problem is free. I remember the story shared by a man of God about a brother in the church who was complaining about his problems. And the man of God said, well, uh, come and meet me at home. I want to take you out so that I will show you a life without problems. So the man of God took the brother out and they were going here and there from one place to another, anywhere they get to, maybe at the bus stop or whatever, and there are problems there. The brother will say, see what I'm saying. And on and on like that, until they were coming back and the man of God drove to a cemetery and told the brother, you want a life without problems? Go and join those who are sleeping in their grave. And the man of God told him, make sure you do not kill yourself because if you try to kill yourself, your problem has just started. So there is no problem-free life. That's number one. Number two, there is no problem-free church or ministry. Because there are people inside the church and in the, in, in the ministry. Number three, problems are not meant to destroy us or to destroy the church, but to develop the church. Some problems, which we love to call challenges somehow, some problems are even divinely orchestrated to toughen the minister and to make the church stronger. Problems are not meant to mar you, but to make you better, to make the church a better church. Then, another fact about problem is that problems are not the end of the road, but the proof that there is road to the desired solution somewhere. Another fact about problems is that the solution to a problem is the open door to another problem. Another fact about problems, problems sometimes make us to think outside the box, to put our thinking faculty to work. Then, problem 
will keep you at a spot until you solve that problem. And every problem you solve, as a church pastor, as a leader, every problem you solve gives you another reason for people to trust your leadership. Now, what are some of the problems bedeviling the church? What are some of the problems that the church is facing today? Number one on our list here is post-pandemic Christianity. Yes, today people are yet to recover from the aftermath of COVID-19. In fact, like a father in the Lord said, is that that uh, God pressed the re reset button of the world during the COVID. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, post-pandemic Christianity, today, one of the problems the church is facing is the problem of lukewarmness, dwindling commitment, and inconsistent attendance in church services. Now, today, a lot of people, after the COVID-19 pandemic, many who were restricted to their homes, many didn't come back to the church. In fact, some people even changed church. And today, even in some circles, you will see that there are some people who prefer to stay online than to go to the church for physical meeting. Then another problem of the church today is the problem of pseudo-gospel messages from pastors. Messages that look like the real gospel, but not the real gospel. Messages that look like gospel message, but they are not real gospel messages. Messages that people will listen to and their lives will not be transformed. The way they came is the way they will leave the church. Or sometimes they even, they even leave the church worse than they came. And in many churches today, pseudo-gospel messages are prevailing. Then number three, the problem of crowd mentality in the church. We are the pastor, the leaders. We are only concerned about having people. Let them come, let them come, let them come. Because the more they are, the more they are offering, and the more we have something to boast of, that we are 10,000, we are 20,000, we are 100,000, we are this, we are that. Problem of crowd mentality. Out of this crowd of people that come to the church, so to say, how many of them really have the touch or have received the transforming power of the Lord as they come? Many of them, they are not, they, 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 they are, they, in fact, you can't call them Christians because they, all, they only come attend services as if they are attending social gathering. The another problem the church is facing is the church, uh, is the problem of commitment. Yes, the commitment level of people today in the church, due to so many reasons, has gone down. In fact, commitment of people in local churches today has dwindled so much and continues to decrease in many local churches, which has led to many pastors even being discouraged. Many pastors are the ones doing the greater percentage of the assignment in the church. Commitment problem. Another problem that the church is facing is the problem of change. Yes. The only constant thing in life is change. But do you know that many of our churches today, they don't want to change from the old and archaic ways through which they have been doing church. Look, we cannot continue to do church or run the church like in the days of our forefathers. 
Today, a lot of techno technological advancement has been introduced into the world. Like I always love to say, any church that does not have online presence today will be left behind. But do you know that there are still some people, there are still some churches who still remained, who still said that they are not going to change. And when you refuse to change, you will be in change. And one thing about change is that if you don't change, change itself will change you. And that's why many members of some of the churches are being changed from their churches to another churches, to other churches. May God help us in Jesus' name. Another problem the church is facing today is the problem of government policies and government policies. The policies of government today in some countries, in some places where there are policies that are anti-gospel, the church is facing that problem today. Not only that, political problems, terrorism, insecurity here and there. Take for instance, the northern part of this country, Nigeria. A lot of pastors, a lot of churches have been burnt down and closed down completely. Members are afraid to attend or to gather together just because of what? Because of the insecurity. That's another problem. Then, another problem that the church is facing today is the problem of neglecting the small group ministry. Yes, in many churches today, house fellowship, men fellowship, youth fellowship, and the rest, all those small group ministries, they are being neglected. In fact, there are some churches who do not run house fellowship. And yet, we expect growth in that church. It's a problem on its own. When we neglect small group meetings, when we neglect our youth, thank God for the message of my dear brother, the first teaching today about the youth. If you neglect the youth ministry, these people are the future of the church. They are the leaders of tomorrow. If you neglect them, uh, you are neglecting a glorious future. Then, there are so many other problems like that. There are spiritual problems, there are physical problems, and on and on like that. But let's move on. What are the root cause of the problem? What are the open doors to problems in the church? Number one I want to mention is sinfulness of church leaders and pastors. When the leader of the church is living in sin perpetually, there will be open doors to problems. So until the sin issue is dealt with in the life of the leader, the church will continue to wallow in problems. Sin is an open door. Even from the generation, from the foundation of the world, sin opens doors to problems in man's life. So that is number one. Number two, root cause of problems in the church is loss of purpose of the church. And there is this popular saying that when the purpose of a thing is unknown, abuses are inevitable. So when the church has lost her purpose, the reason for her establishment, then there will be a problem. Then problematic pastors, that's number three, problematic pastors, problematic ministers, and problematic church workers. They cannot but cause problems because there are some pastors, they are difficult and there are some ministers that are difficult, and there are some church workers who are difficult workers. They will always cause problems. Then, when the church has lost her vision and concentration, when the church can no longer see beyond the immediate, it will cause problems. Then, problematic hold members. In many churches, some old members, are, they, they are formed clique. 
or block. And we refer to them as power brokers, decision makers and opinion molders. People like that, they are problems of the church. Then, another root cause of problems is where we are sentimental. You know, tribal sentiment is one of the problems the Nigerian church is battling with today. There are some churches, if you are, a no, if you are not a Yoruba person, you are not welcome. And there are some churches in Nigeria today that if you are not an Igbo person, you are not welcome. Now, how will such a church not have problems? When we are sentiment, tribal sentiment is a problem. Then another problem, another root cause of problem in the church today is too much money consciousness. Yes. When all our preachings, our teachings, our ministrations is targeted at the pocket of the people. When, when every message is rounded off with calling for money, for donation, for sowing seed and the rest. Instead of making altar call for salvation of souls, when our focus is on money, 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 <laughs> it's another cause of problems. There are, I know a lot of people who do not want to go to church again or who see church as a business center where nothing is being said to them than Bring, 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 bring. So money, so seed, so seed, so seed, so seed. May God deliver us. Then, another cause of problems, another root cause of problem in the church is poor administration. When there is poor administration in the church, and not administer the people very well, the resources, the, 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 the materials of the church, if we cannot do proper administration in the church, it will cause problems. Then, another root cause of problem is lack of prayer foundation. Yes, the church was battered in prayers. And if the church will continue to survive, the church must not neglect prayers. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Now, quickly, let's look at the church reality tomorrow. Since we are looking at uh, church problems today, church reality tomorrow. Now, I I'm going to do this like a uh, question and the reality. Now, number one, the church problem that you left unsolved today will be the reality staring the church in the face tomorrow. Any problem you, le you leave unsolved, any problem left unsolved today will be the reality you will contend with tomorrow. So the question now is, what problems are you glossing over among your people today as a minister? Ponder on that. Number two, the lukewarm services, ceremonial services and on disciple Christians that we are raising today we produce worldly and religious church in the future so the question now is what is the spiritual state of your members what is the spiritual state of your members are they people that are truly disciples of christ then number three the members of the church today they will be the ministers of tomorrow. Because you and I were sinners of yesterday that we became Christians and now we are ministers today. So, the question now is that are you training your members today to become sound gospel ministers tomorrow? Or you are just leaving them as customers 
who come and go after they have purchased their, 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 their miracles, their signs, and the blunders. Number four, church practices of today will set the tone for the kind of Christianity that will be practiced to, tomorrow. You see, one of the challenges I have with us today is that I used to wonder, and it always, it always gives me problem or things to think about. What is it? If the kind of messages that we are preaching today are the kinds of messages that were preached to us, we will not have given our life to Christ. We will not have become Christians today. So what has come over us that we have changed? May God help us to go back to the drawing board. So the question now is, is doctrine of salvation first and holiness next? Emphasize among your people. Do you emphasize salvation first, then holiness and righteousness next? Then number five, the people you disciple and train for the Lord today will be the pillar for the faith tomorrow because they are the ones that will uphold the faith tomorrow. So are you training disciples or you are just raising church goers and commas? Then number six, the true church of the Bible, the truth of the Bible and the commandments of the Lord you teach your young people today will be the legacy you will leave for the next generation. So what foundation are you laying for the people of today? There are so many people we refer to as fathers in the faith. It is because of the sound foundation they gave us. That's why we refer to them as fathers in the faith today. Then, number seven, the Christ you show the, to the church of today is the Christ they will serve tomorrow. So who are you showing to the people today? Who are you showing to your people today in your church? Are you showing yourself or you are showing Christ? Because it has been discovered that in many churches today, the pastors are more popular, the leaders are more popular, more respected, more venerated, even than Jesus Christ, the founder and the foundation of the church. Then number eight, the training exercise to take people through is the exercise they will take to the future. Are you taking your people through any training at the moment? In fact, the people you don't train, they are the people that will give you continuous problems. So let's embark on continuous training for our people through organized seminars, conferences, and workshops. Then nine, the problem you do not address today will soon become a concurrent practice in the church. There is no doubt about that one. So what are the wrong practices among your members that they are doing today and you deliberately just overlook them? Because there are some things some people will do, we just gloss over them, we just overlook it. <laughs> They are the same problems that we steer us in the face in the future. Then, the last one. The youth and the children you do not raise today, they will never serve God tomorrow. The people and the, pro and, and the youth that you neglect to train today, that you refuse to raise today, they will never serve God tomorrow. Unfortunately, there are so many ministers whose children are not even serving their God today. May God rebuke Satan. So are your children and youth neglected or engaged in the process to serve the Lord? Every minister, every pastor, every church leader, today we hold the Church of Christ the responsibility of training, raising, and discipling people of today for the Lord, so that they can become Christians that we stand as true church tomorrow. Don't forget, church is people, and people are the church. It is not the building. The building is just a fellowship center. 
But how are you raising people for the Lord today? Don't forget, the people you raise today, they are the ones that have become the disciples and the army of the Lord to fight the battles of tomorrow. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you.